we're here with Maddie talking. We're going to talk about Crockett Cup. Big weekend ahead. There, there's two days of events. There's a fan fest, a lot to get into, but you're going to be going into a hardcore team war. Uh, thoughts on entering such a vicious match before you, before you get there? No. Um, I mean, it's not, it's hard to prepare for, I feel like, um, there's just so many elements in that match. And, um, I feel like pretty empowered almost has an advantage just because they know each other. Um, they work together, whereas me and Missa haven't really worked with Samantha and LaRosa. And even though it is like basically one-on-one, uh, outside factors do matter. Um, so there's a lot going on in my mind. Um, I think Pretty Empowered has a, a pompous attitude about what they think they can accomplish. Um, but in reality, they are just children. Um, so <laughs> whatever they think that they're going to throw at us is definitely going to get hit right back like 10 times harder. You also have Baby Doll in your corner. That's got to be cool from a historical perspective. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but from what I've seen in the past, she definitely only has her daughter's intentions in mind. So um, we'll see how that plays out. <laughs> you think she could be a, a possible side character? No, she is a side character. She is. Okay. Not a possible, she is. Okay. Uh, one other thing I, I did want to bring up is uh, you're – you know, you're going into this match, hardcore team war. There's obviously an emphasis on there's going to be weapons. It's going to be pretty hard hitting, brutal. Uh, I would say you're a pretty tough individual. You you have come back from, I think it was two metacarpal fractures, if I have it correct. Yeah. <laughs> Any adjustments you maybe had to, to make after returning from that? Um. So what most people don't know it is, is it was kind of a... A strenuous recovery process um, from the time it broke and uh, from the time that I was able to get like the um, the cast so to speak off like I wasn't able to lift more than five pounds for about two months with my left hand and it was practically like dead I couldn't like move my fingers up down so um, now I have metal in my hand so I feel like that's something they need to look out for as it is um, maybe to my advantage. Um, but the recovery was tough. It's just always something that I know is there, but I know isn't going to bother me. Um, but yeah, I think it just kind of made me angrier to have uh, that uh, someone who uh, broke my hand and uh, to have to watch everyone kind of keep going while I had to sit on the sidelines. I feel like it put a chip on my shoulder and pissed me off a little bit. Uh, so I'll just harbor that every time I every time I feel my hands. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe go Bob Orton style at some point. I I thought about it coming back. I definitely did, <laughs> but it might have actually really hurt. <laughs> yeah. No, that that was one injury. I know, uh, not to peek behind the curtain too much, but I know part of it. Uh, there was a Mission Pro storyline where it you were attacked and your face was slammed into a car you know you had like a a broken nose there too uh was that all story was that you know can you talk about what the the idea was behind that um yeah so yet again these side characters don't know um how to wrestle and um i basically got hit in the nose and someone broke my nose so it was a little bit of both because uh, i was out um but it was not a car but don't tell mission pro it still might have been jasmine uh <laughs> that part i will not disclose but yes someone did break my nose <laughs> I, I, you've been a big part of NWA. Obviously, we're talking about the Crockett Cup, uh, June 3rd and June 4th coming up. But you're also one half of the NWA World Women's Tag Team Champions uh, with Miss Kate. You already talked about that briefly, but what's it been like? Uh, just a, you, you kind of mentioned like 
your your team itself is a little new. You don't have the the history as maybe uh, pretty empowered does, but over a hundred days as champions so far. So what's sort of that been like? Just finding chemistry with each other and just you know representing the NWA as a tag team champion. Yeah, um, it's it's been good. Um, we definitely are two very A type personalities. Um, and so sometimes that works really well together. Sometimes we butt heads. Um, but I think we're both very honest, blunt people to where we are able to eventually have the same end goal and move forward. So working together, we are learning each other. <laughs> we're like same, same, but different. I'm very... Um, I don't know. You think of like Texas and you think of like rough in a sense. Uh, for me, I am very like blunt. Um, when I wrestle, my style is like, I like to beat the crap out of people. And she's from Chicago and you think of Chicago and you're like Chicago. Um, <laughs> so they like complement each other, but they're not the same. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so we are learning to work with each other. And I think that the NWA titles um, and being able to represent them, it was just a matter of time. I mean, like I'm already great. I just needed that platform um, to make everyone else know how great I am. And this is along for the ride as well. All right. So common goal, <laughs> common goal is you both want to beat the crap out of each other. You're, you're from tough areas and just one does barbecue better and Always. Exactly, and I hope you're talking about mine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Have you? Ever, I, if Chicago does barbecue, I've never heard of it. So no, it probably has like pickles and whatever their Chicago dog has. And <laughs> uh, good hot dogs, but uh, just don't tell me you put ketchup on them. They don't like that. I put ketchup on it. <laughs> I, I I just said Chicago does, and I don't. I don't. Oh oh oh. oh. <laughs> I definitely put ketchup on my Chicago dog when I went up. <laughs> <He'll> turn. <laughs> so side character spotlight, we kind of touched on it briefly, but if anybody doesn't know that is watching this or is going to read the written article, it's your show that you do on social media. You talk to various wrestlers that uh, you come across in your travels Uh what was the the sort of genesis, the idea behind doing that? Because you, you've kind of seen, and I, I will credit you for this. I've seen a lot of people do the tiny mic. <laughs> I Whenever I see it, I'm like, oh, wait, Matt, that's Maddie's thing. <laughs> and somebody else is like, I said that to you. They were like, no, 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 no. That's like, you know, I'm like, no, I, like I saw her do it first. So I, like, that's who I say <laughs> I'll give credit to because now it's you did it first and now everybody's kind of following it was like a, a bat a major league baseball player was doing it and I was like um, I saw her do it first so what was sort of <laughs> the, the idea behind doing it yeah um so in the business when you uh work it's like a big world but a small world and a lot of times you see the same people over and over um and I was unfortunate enough to see Kylan all the time um, and Kylan has evolved in a sense, and she now calls herself the motherfucking king. And having to hear that over and over and hear her say that, and everyone on social media saying that she's the motherfucking king, I was like, what does that actually mean? Like, what does that mean at the very base level of it? Like, you're a king that fucks mothers. Um, and so <laughs> I have a very strange sense of humor. So I was like, it would be really funny to, like, do a little interview with her and just see her reaction to that. So, like, every side character spotlight is uh, basically like a candid camera. Uh, my whole point is to see or try and get some type of reaction um, from the person next to me. <laughs> do you have any personal favorites that, uh, you've done so far, or maybe some that you have in mind that you'd like to score? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think my favorite is again, just the initial one that started that spark, uh, with Kylan. Um, I definitely would like to get jazz on there. I'm scared she might hit me though. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, that's definitely one person I have down on my list. Um, but yeah. 
they're all side characters so can't really have like a favorite favorite <laughs> uh i'm just gonna acknowledge you said that i do not i'm not gonna say jazz is a side character because she might hit me too well she probably will. <laughs> you, you, you can say that <laughs> uh you've been I, I mentioned not only on nwa tv but uh we've seen you on aew ring of honor uh i believe last thursday your match with willow aired uh what's that experience been like uh obviously being on nwa every week or almost every week but having a regular role on that show and then also getting a chance to expand your brand and your profile on ring of honor and aew yeah um i feel like nwa obviously has that historic sentimental um like value to their promotion. Like this is one of the longest running, if not the longest running, right? Uh, wrestling promotion out there. Um, so it's definitely incredible to be on their product so consistently. Um, I feel like though getting to branch out and do other um, promotions like AEW and ROH, it's a different, um, it's a different vibe. Um, their production is they're doing their stuff in like front of huge live crowds um, as well as I feel like it not only helps me like continue to hone my craft, but like at the, at the end of the day, when my matches are posted, people are saying like, Oh, this is one half of the NWA champions. So it's not like they're like, uh, I'm not promoting both brands. Cause like, that's who I am right now. I am the NWA champion and I just happen to be on ROH. Um, so I think it's honestly like a win-win for everyone. I get to try my my skills against uh, more women, um, kind of different skill set as well. I think the women at NWA definitely wrestle a lot rougher and tougher. Um, and uh, AEW uh, and ROH, it's a little bit different of a style. And so it's nice to have to try and... Um, pull out my hybrid skills to try and get the win <laughs> you've wrestled on aew programming before uh but your last appearance was sort of a blink and you missed it uh, <laughs> you were in the the mr softy thing at uh I, I forget what city it was but uh roderick roderick strong and chris jericho were fighting you you were behind the counter uh did you know, like, how did that come about? Did you know that uh, you were going to be shown on camera or what What was that all about? Um, I mean, I it was in Austin. And so I was there uh, doing work with them. And uh, I was just informed that they needed someone uh, in, a, in a space. And so I, I volunteered myself. I was like, I'm not sure what's about to happen but it sounds like sounds like a me job <laughs> yeah so. the the expression was great because you were just like like <laughs> sold it. and then you see like ice cream getting thrown around and then you know like you kind of alluded to when you're featured on you know when your matches are featured your name get you gets tagged and it's like oh she's the nwa champion but like that night everybody was like, oh, wait, was that you? Was that you? And you're like, uh, like <laughs> being a little coy about it, but, uh, it, it was good to see you pop up in, uh, in the background for that one. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I didn't know what to expect at all. Um, cause it's wrestling <laughs> and, and food fights and wrestling are always fun. Yeah. I was more concerned that, um, I was going to get like hit with ice cream but i did get to get some uh, ice cream after or i guess soft serve was good mr soft yeah was good <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it and got you know a nice treat afterwards uh i have a, my last question for you i usually do a watch list feature uh going into the crockett cup i know this is a hardcore team war but is there any match that maybe highlights who you strive to be as a wrestler overall maybe not one that highlights uh your hardcore fighting skills but just one that you really want fans to you know sit down and watch and be like okay here's the maddie i'm gonna get 
every time or just one that's memorable for any other reason? Like of my matches or matches that I watch? One that you one that you've been in. Oh. Um I will have to throw it back. I personally, in the NWA specifically, um, I personally enjoyed my match with Kylie Ray, um, even though I was still and still pretty young into the business, but I was even younger back then. Um, it was, I feel like the first match where I felt comfortable to be who I was um, in a stage like that. Um, I liked that one. I also really enjoyed um, me and Leva Bates in AEW Dark. Uh, when, during the pandemic period, we had like a little, uh, a little run, uh, I think it was two matches. I'm not sure if there was supposed to be a third, but um, it was really fun to kind of have some type of story. And again, very young, would love to run something back like that with what I know now. Uh, but I think those probably are my favorite just because it allowed me to showcase my personality. All right. I like it. Uh, perhaps maybe in the future you get a chance to run that back. I know she's a free agent right now. So uh, NWA Crockett Cup, June 3rd and 4th, you will be in a hardcore team war. Uh, thanks for your time today. It was nice getting a chance to catch up with you and, you know, learn a little bit more about uh, what it takes to be a main character in <laughs> all of other side characters. So thank you. No problem. But I will say, I feel like, as the world's women's champions, tag champions, we should have been in the Crockett Cup. Isn't it a tag team tournament? Like I feel like we should have been in it. Uh, perhaps a late edition, or perhaps twenty twenty four. I think you have a claim to that. So exactly, put in a good word. <laughs> I'll try. All right, have a good day. Bye bye. <laughs>